Hello, welcome back. So in this video, we will be discussing section 1.1 from my proofs book. Uh, but before we get there, I wanted to briefly explain what will not be discussed in this video. Uh, you know, most intro to proofs books begin with a lot of groundwork. Chapter one, oftentimes chapter two, sometimes even chapter three involves very little, if any, proofs. Um, they discuss set theory and there's plenty to discuss there. Uh, and sets are the basis for a lot of math. So, you know, there's some, some logic there. Um, they might discuss, uh, or oftentimes they discuss logic quite extensively. Um, if then statements, implications, students might spend a lot of time doing truth tables, looking for logical equivalents um, through either the sets or the logic sections. You might discuss quantifiers uh, pretty deeply. And there is perfect, there's perfectly good reason to do this. Um, although I uh, pretty passionately disagree. Um, now I am just postponing these topics. They will be discussed eventually. Uh, chapter three will be focused on sets, um, the, base, the basic set theory, but also proofs uh, uh, involving sets. And uh, chapter five will be about logic. So these topics are coming, they are important. I just feel that they should not be discussed right away. Um, uh, so chapter one of my book aims to jump right into developing the type of thinking that you need in order to prove things in math. And hopefully does so in a way that is enjoyable, that catches people's attention, that makes them want to uh, read on because there's so much, there's so many fun things that you can do in an intro to proofs class. And, uh, you know, I want to jump in with, with some of those fun things right off the bat. Uh, so in this first section, section 1.1, we will be focusing on chess boards. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm at the board now. Uh, if you are watching these videos because you are trying to become the best mathematician you can, the best proof writer that you can, uh, that I suggest you take notes on the things that I write on the board and things that I don't write on the board, uh, just things that I say. Whatever resonates with you, I suggest writing it down. Um, I suggest you pausing these videos when you're not, when things aren't, aren't clear, going back and watching things again. Um, of course, if you are just watching these videos because you like math and you want to watch something in your, in your free time, that's great. I'm not against math as a hobby. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving advice to the students out there who, who really want to become students of mathematics. Um, okay. So, uh, I mentioned chess boards. What I say a chess board, uh, what I mean is something like, like this. Okay. Uh, this was a little wrinkly. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I was, uh, I, I, I did chess. <laughs> I went to chess tournaments and stuff. And um, at one of the tournaments, someone left behind their board with no, no way to get it back to the person. So they, they gave it to me. <laughs> so um, if this was your board, ciao. If that is you, apologies. Send me an email. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it back to you. Uh, but I've had this board since the late 90s. And uh, this is what I mean when I say a chessboard. I mean a, uh, an eight by eight arrangement of squares, um, same as a checkerboard. You do not need to know anything about chess uh, to follow what, what we're gonna discuss. Just that a, uh, a chessboard is an eight by eight uh, grid of squares. Um, also, I'm gonna talk about dominoes. So by domino, I mean uh, something like this, which I, which I just made, uh, which covers up, uh, which is a two by one arrangement of squares. So it's, you can go this way, you can go horizontal or vertical, but imagine that uh, the dominoes uh, are, each square of the domino is the same size as each square of the, of the chessboard. So it perfectly covers up uh, two of the squares. Okay, so you get the idea over here, over there, over there, no matter what, it, oh, I'm sorry, uh, no matter where you put it, uh, it's going to cover up two of the squares. Okay, so uh, here are some notes. Um, we'll talk about this more later, but in math, we're always very, very precise with, uh, with our language. Um, okay, so for, for this first chapter, and we're just getting warmed up, I will, I'll be a little, perhaps a little bit looser with my precision, but nevertheless, uh, that's what we are working towards, and we're going to get there very soon. 
Um, okay, so so here we go. A chess chessboard problems. Uh, this is section 2.1. Uh, a chessboard is an eight by eight grid of squares. A domino is a two by one domino. Perhaps maybe I should say uh, is a two by one uh, grid of squares. A very simple grid. Um, so one conclusion. Uh, just to be clear, what I mean, these are the same size squares. So one domino covers two adjacent squares of the chessboard. Okay. So that's the first thing to make clear. Let me give you a definition. I'm going to have some animations in a second to illustrate this point. The third thing we need to define is what a perfect cover is. I'm sorry for my handwriting. I know it's not great. Hopefully it looks legible, even if it's far from pretty. A perfect cover, because that's the important thing we want to discuss. A perfect cover. Um, of an M by N board. Okay, so we've been talking about an eight by eight chess board, but for the sake of this definition, let's generalize it a bit. Um, there's no need to define it only for uh, an eight by eight board. Let's define it for an arbitrary rectangular board. Uh, perfect cover of an M by N board with two by one dominoes. is an arrangement of those dominoes on the chessboard. So it's an arrangement of those dominoes on the chessboard with no squares left uncovered. So all the squares are covered up by a domino. With no squares left uncovered. And furthermore, you know, you don't want some squares to be covered by multiple dominoes. Okay, so they're not dominoes are not being stacked on top of each other. Okay. So and uh, no dominoes stacked. And we don't want dominoes like hanging off the end of the board. Okay, so every domino is covering two squares of the chessboard, uh, or of the M by N board in general, um, or left hanging off off an end. Okay, so no off an edge of the of, of the chessboard. Okay, so that's the idea of a perfect perfect cover. We have uh, uh, a board, and we're covering it up with dominoes. So a chessboard, eight by eight grid, that's 64 squares. Each domino covers two squares. 64 divided by two is 32. So it would have to require, it would have to use 32 dominoes exactly um, in some arrangement to cover up the board. Okay, I prepared some animations. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. Okay, well, hopefully this is now working. Hopefully I am now a smaller version of myself off to the side. And hopefully right here, what you see is uh, a chessboard. Um, and what I wanna show you are some examples of ways to uh, perfectly cover the chessboard. That's also called tiling, by the way. Sometimes in math, two words are given the same meaning or very similar meanings that they can overlap in, in certain instances. Anyways, so uh, this should be an example of a perfect covering. That's the term I'll use here. Uh, with 64 squared, we need 32 dominoes. And for example, one way to perfectly cover this chessboard is to do all 32 dominoes horizontally. Okay. Next, uh, there are, but of course there are other ways to do it. You could make them all vertical. You can mix and match. You could have some horizontal and other uh, vertical. 
Or of course, there are many more. Here's one more, it's kind of a fancy one, but you could imagine that there are a lot of these. Now, one might ask the question, how many are there? That's a combinatorics question. It's a very hard combinatorics question. Uh, think about it. Um, I would be shocked if any of you could figure it out uh, on your own without looking it up, but who knows, maybe you can. Either way, even it, you know, it's good to think about problems even if you don't solve them, to appreciate the, the nuances, the subtleties. Why is that such a hard problem? Well, think about it. Pause the video, go on a walk, or go down and get some paper. I don't know, just write it out. See if you can figure out any ideas, and you'll quickly, I think you'll probably quickly find it is a very challenging problem. Um, but it, the answer is known. Um, uh, but anyways, so uh, those are some examples of ways to perfectly cover a chessboard. Okay, so uh, if you're taking notes, you can of course just pause the video now to catch up, uh, but otherwise I'll, I'll continue. So this is a proof. Uh, it's a rather simple proof, but that's okay. Uh, so this is a proof of the statement that there exists a perfect covering. How do you prove a cow exists? You show me a cow. How do you prove a perfect covering exists? You show me a perfect covering. Okay, so observe that this is a perfect covering. So if you have an eight by eight uh, chessboard, here is a blue domino covering up these two squares. Here's a green domino right below it, then blue, then green, and that is the first column. And then you just sort of repeat that pattern uh, through all the columns. So this is the vertical uh, tiling that you saw before. Um, and oftentimes proofs that have a some sort of concluding statement wrapping it up. So we have shown by example that a perfect covering exists completing the proof. Okay, so that is a proof. Um, oh, uh, oftentimes, uh, typically in fact, uh, you should just, in fact, you should just make this your practice. At the end of each of your proofs, you put a little box or some other end of proof symbol uh, a square is the most common one that is used uh, to indicate that your argument is complete. Um, there are there are some books, uh, Dublin and Foote's Algebra is the famous one, uh, which does not have any end of proof symbols. And it's confusing at times because you'll finish, uh, or they will finish a perhaps a complicated argument, uh, perhaps a little terse, to, to prove a statement, and then just jump right into a little discussion. And it's a little clear, right? Is this discussion part of the proof or not? It's good practice to end your proofs with a symbol. Uh, so maybe I'll write a little note. This indicates the proof is done. Now, in the actual proof, I wrote completing the proof, so in this case, it's it was already obvious. But go ahead and do it. Always add a little uh, a square at the end of your proofs. It's a good habit. Um, there's a story about these. So a mathematician named uh, Paul, Paul, I think Paul, Halmos. So Halmos was a uh, pretty influential mathematician, especially in analysis. He wrote this uh, influential analysis book in the mid-20th century. And um, he ended all of his proofs with a symbol. Uh, and that, my understanding is that is what popularized it amongst, amongst mathematicians. It kind of uh, became mainstream after that. Um, uh, there's a story that's uh, perhaps apocryphal that uh, Helmos, it's, so this symbol is sometimes called the Helmos tombstone. Helmos tombstone. Well, why would that be? Well, the story goes that Helmos uh, viewed his theorems as living things until you proved it. Once you have a proof of a theorem, then you have defeated the theorem. You have, in a sense, killed off the theorem. And since you've killed it, you should write, you should give it a tombstone. So this was, uh, this, as the story goes, this was uh, um, the, the, the tombstone marker for, for the now dead theorem. Uh, again, that might be apocryphal. There's no clear evidence for that, but uh, it's a fun story nevertheless. So there you go, that's the story. And I think actually we'll stop here. So I've been advised to keep these videos at a more manageable length. So we'll stop here. Next time we'll ask some, uh, I think, uh, more interesting questions about the existence of perfect coverings, including one of my favorite problems. So uh, stay tuned, come back next for, for the next video, and I will show you one of my favorite problems. Um, okay, see you next time. <laughs>